Hi, this is Brian Eisenberg, and welcome to a comparison of the anatomy of B2B landing pages. Today we'll do a review of the Square, Intuit Go Payment, and PayPal mobile credit card reader landing pages. This is a far from exhaustive review because I only have a few minutes to kind of go over it in this presentation, but I want to give you some of the uh, thinking frameworks and processes that, that uh, I use when I evaluate landing pages. Whenever I think of a landing page, what I end up doing is I look at the anatomy of a landing page. I take a look at all the core elements that I expect to see on a landing page. Usually there are these nine main elements, the logo, the headline, whether that's text or graphical, the offer, right? What it is that you actually want to convey as value that someone should get, uh, descriptive copy, whether it's a bulleted list, a, 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 a block, however you actually write up the copy regarding the offer. Uh, the product or service presentation that can come in numerous ways from product images to tours to screenshots to lifestyle images to calls to action, whether that's links, buttons or forms to confidence building elements, which are your testimonials, examples of users uh, or third party validators, some links to more information and then, of course, some template elements. So what we typically do is take a look at any particular landing page and we overlay all the elements of the anatomy on top of it. And Without looking at the page now, without the details to kind of convey exactly, to confuse you almost on what the page is actually doing, this kind of gives you a better sense of what is laid out in what location. So we're going to do the same thing for each of these different landing pages. And then we're also going to take a look at it from the five dimensions of each element that actually matter. Is the element most relevant? Uh, what is the quality of elements? What are the location of the particular elements? Are they in the right place? Are they, are they uh, proximity? Are they next to the right uh, issues? Uh, usually you want the offer next to the call to action, that kind of thing. And then of course, is it prominent? Does it stand out? So we'll look at some eye tracking related to that. So let's start with the square page. Beautiful page, uh, very, very simple. And as you can see here, when we start looking at the anatomy, um, you know, we've got the logo and the template elements navigation. We've got a simple headline. Uh, uh, a main call to action, the offer below it, which is an interesting uh, aspect here, some confidence building material, uh, the, a very big product presentation and a big hero lifestyle, some secondary calls to action in the sliders to, offer, to look at their other products, their Square Register and Square Wallet, and then links to more information on the bottom. Now, the one thing I would definitely want to do on this page, if I could, and we'll definitely see a little later in the eye tracking, is the links to more information, even on this screen, uh, is actually very hard to read. There's very little contrast to it. And because of how strong an image they have on top, they could have added a little bit more contrast to that link. For the person who isn't so spontaneous uh, and wants to dig in for more details, they could see the links on the bottom to dig in more details. The only other things here to really click on if you need more details is to click on top of the offer. There's that little arrow next to the copy. So I, I definitely would have wanted something in case someone needs a little bit more details about this and not so spontaneous that they have a chance to dig in. Now let's look at the PayPal page. Again, a beautifully designed page, uh, very simple. Uh, you see very clearly what the product presentation is. Um, there are a couple of different uh, calls to action. I, I really don't like uh, the different blues in the uh, get PayPal here button and the uh, meet PayPal here uh, little widget that kind of po points out all the different uh, pieces of their offer. Um, so again, here, as you look at it, you can see it's a little bit more complex than the one, even though it's, it's, it's actually, you know, um, uh, kind of simpler looking than the square image because it's not using a lifestyle image across the screen the same way that square is. So here's the logo, the template elements of navigation, the headline, the descriptive copy, the call to action. Um, they've got two of them there. The product presentation, the offer below, again, some confidence building material, some links to more information, and then their template elements. Now let's look at the Intuit Go payment. Now this is an interesting page. I think this page is definitely designed more towards uh, the humanistic personality. Um, it's a lot more about the people. It's not uh, uh, just a hand holding uh, the, uh, a phone. Uh, you actually see people communicating. Uh, you've also got a kind of a lifestyle hero shot at the top. You've got the face around the testimonial. Uh, but if you look at this from the anatomy point of view, you'll see the logo, the template elements, navigation on top. The headline, uh, the call to action, you've got a subheadline there. Uh, a, the product presentation kind of is the, the image that kind of giving you some information there in um, the, the little chalkboard area. Uh, I think it's kind of confusing. Most people are going to have a hard time reading that. Uh, the product presentation then further below that actually talks you through the steps. Uh, the offer for the free app and free uh, card reader, uh, the main call to action, that's a lot of room for confidence building material. And then, of course, your links to uh, more information after that. 
Now, what I always tell uh, designers and marketers whenever they're looking at their landing page is the first thing they should do whenever they get their mock-up essentially of their uh, elements that they want in the page is that they should prioritize those based on what actions you want to make sure that your visitor sees or does during that page visit. So uh, based on what I perceive on this landing page for Square, um, because of the reverse type text, I'm actually going to think that the headline is not as important to them as making sure you see the product presentation. So that would be my number one. The call to action, uh, especially with a really wide form. Um, and I don't know whether that's because my screen is stretching or not um, as number two. And then for number three would be the offer. Obviously, you know, the fact that they're offering, you know, 2.75 per swipe, uh, no additional fees and next day deposits uh, is definitely a, a, a big upside, very clear uh, offer of what the, you get when you sign up for this. Now, when I look at this from the uh, PayPal uh, point of view, uh, again, uh, I, gr I think that number one is probably that product presentation. Uh, number two is probably the call to action, and then number three would be uh, the offer, uh, especially because they they put that blue at the meet PayPal here or at the end there. So definitely would think that's where uh, some attention would go based on based on the way the design is currently. And then if I look at the Intuit page and the anatomy, uh, I would assume that the uh, product presentation here below. Uh, is actually the primary thing that people would want. They want people to focus on. Uh, two would definitely be the call to action, um, and again they repeat it twice, the same button. And then three would be uh, the additional product presentation, kind of to support some of the core messages that they're they're telling about the product uh, when you sign up there. Now what happens is if you take that the, the same screenshots now uh, of the actual pages and you put it into a heat map tool like uh, Fengui, uh, you'll actually see where the attention goes on the page. And so we definitely see here there's a lot of attention, a lot of concentration on the intersection of the skin tone of the hand uh, and the Visa card with the, with the uh, square reader, which is great. So the, obviously a big part of where the attention wants to go. You definitely get some attention towards uh, the headline, which is absolutely perfect it's it's one of the important things but even if you didn't read the headline you kind of get a sense of what's going on here especially with the call to action of the free uh, uh the get free card reader and, and the focus right on the form so i think that's great but you notice there really isn't a lot of attention around um the actual offer of the 2.75 uh, so that'd be a little concern and there's a little hot spot there uh, by the arm on the bottom but not not a major issue because you, you wouldn't get focus there so again when we overlay this in terms of where the priorities are Right again, you can see one product presentation. We've done a pretty good job. Uh, I might have wanted to see if I could figure out a way to get the square reader, maybe a little bit more of that heat map, but that's that's still okay. Uh, a lot of attention on the call to action, which is perfect. And then number three, which was our offer, is not. It's kind of getting it off to the side a little bit, but at least it's 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 nearby. Not perfect, but pretty good. Now, when we take a look at the PayPal page. Again, you can see it's a beautifully designed page, uh, very simple focus points. We're right on the product presentation, we're right on the call to action, and we're right on the offer of the, of the Meet uh, PayPal here. Uh, and that falls very much in line with where I think the priorities were, right? The product presentation uh, was number one, the call to action number two, uh, and then the offer number three. But I would have I thought they would have liked to have focused on the fact that they actually have a lower uh, swipe rate of a 2.7%, not 2.75, and they also offer more payment types than anyone else. Uh, actually, they have a link that compares all the different solutions on the page, and that's practically invisible unless you really try to dig in here. Uh, and I think that is the, one of the biggest value points. So I, I think they missed it a little bit by making the focal point too much on the Meet PayPal here, which doesn't say much, and doesn't really guide them along to the other benefit points. Now, when we look at the Intuit page, uh, again, we're gonna see uh, a lot of attention on on the uh, call to action buttons, a lot on the face. That's very typical. Whenever we see faces, there's going to be a lot of attention there. Uh, and then some towards the headline. Uh, but there really isn't any focus on the product presentation at all, either one. Um, definitely there's focus on the call to action buttons on both of them, which is great. Uh, and, and then um, the third one they would uh, suspect is the product presentation on top, which gets very, very little uh, focal attention. It goes back towards the confidence building material, which, again, if you're, if you're focusing on the slower decision makers uh, and that's their audience, um, then Intuit's done a really good job here. The last thing I'd want to take a look at uh, is evaluating the page from what I call my call to uh, my conversion trinity aspect, right? Uh, is it relevant to what I'm looking for? Is it really speaking to the audience? Uh, do they understand why 
the particular company and the landing page is the right solution for their needs, the understanding the value, and have they built enough confidence in order to take that next action, uh, and is it obvious what action uh, they need to take next? So when we look at all the different parts of the pages uh, and we compare them, uh, the he headlines, I think they have d different styles. I think Intuit probably goes a little long with the headline and sub-headline. I think both of uh, PayPal and Square are straight and to the point, very simple. From an offer perspective, um, you look at Intuit's with their free app and free card reader, just a small uh, fee per swipe, no monthly fees, no contract canceling time view pricing. They don't really go into a lot of details on the, on the landing page, uh, so it's a little vague. Uh, PayPal has lots of those little widgets next to that uh, Meet PayPal, that blue Meet PayPal, uh, with lots of little details on there. They, they have a lot to offer. Um, and Square just keeps it nice and simple. Sign up and get a free mobile card reader, 2.75 per swipe, no additional fees, and next day deposit. Kind of right, right straight to the message without going overboard. Uh, and I think, they've again, they've done a great job here. From a call to action perspective, Intuit uh, gives you two uh, give it a try buttons. They don't want you to miss those. Then when you click on that, it, um, it gives you a choice of two different apply now buttons. So you have to make a choice between one plan versus the next plan. And then when you click on an apply now button, it will open up a new window to open up a, whole, a form uh, that involves uh, multiple steps to actually create your account. PayPal, and in, in each of those steps, by the way, it gives you a, a chance to lose somebody. PayPal um, has a watch how it works button so they have a video overlay that opens up if you click on it so i think that's a, that is is fine then they have a get paypal here button which overlays uh, an, uh, and opens up for a mobile number to be inputted for a text me link button and then uh, you have to go through the whole process of setting up a paypal account so that's a kind of an interesting approach a good uh, halfway approach and not as confusing i think as as intuit with lots of different decision points before you get started in Square, they tell you get your free card reader, and then they have a simple form right on the homepage uh, and on the landing page uh, uh, for email, password, and to confirm your password form fields. That's it, and that gets you started with with uh, uh, into the process. Then they ask you where do you want, um, and this is part of the next step, the sign up process. You fill out the form, then they ask you where do you want your reader to be sent, and they then go on to complete your business profile. So they simplify it up front, gather your information, and then move you along. Uh, into it, on the other hand. You know, you click one button, then you have to choose a plan from different things, and then you have to go through multiple steps, with, and all they tell you is next. You don't even know how many multiple steps there are. PayPal, you have to download that link to a phone, then you're going to get that link onto your phone uh, through, through a mess, uh, text message. You have to download the app, and then they're going to walk you through the process. So, again, a little bit better than uh, Intuit, but not as simple as the Square. So when I have to go ahead and I evaluate each of these based on relevance, value, and call to action... I'm going to have to give the, the benefit to Square on relevance. They're simple, clean, and right to the point. Um, from a value perspective, I go back to Square with an A-. Um, you know, There's a lot more details people may want to find out. They don't make it really simple to find that out, but they certainly make it simple and clear enough that most people will figure out exactly what it's for, and especially with all the buzz around uh, what they're doing. Uh, and other people seeing the square reader, I think they're probably okay with where they're at. Um, again, even though they could probably do a couple of tweaks. And then from a call to action perspective, square hands down makes it nice and simple to look at. So go ahead, take a look at your landing pages. You can use these different processes to go ahead and improve your current landing pages. And especially if it's for a complex sale like these. Thank you very much for paying attention today.